everybody, and welcome to this week's interview. As we have a special guest, this is from the Christian death metal band Mortification. Thanks for stopping by, Steve. I appreciate you. Come on. Well, thank you, Paul, for having us. Uh, um, you know, you've been for quite a while. Um, what was 20 years, maybe a little longer? Uh, has it been? Well, I've been playing Christian heavy rock and heavy rock years. I started my first Christian heavy rock band in 1994. I remember uh, listening to a radio program uh, that went uh, over the mail. It was yeah. Bad, but but at the time you were doing... I, I had a number of bands. I had a number of people, of course, like for the digs. Right, that, was the next, that was the next thing I was going to say. Uh, at that time you were for and, uh, and and I remember the first I heard by uh, you with Life Force was brutal, and I, that was a good song. And I'm very proud of Mortation song. Warfare was done. I don't think it was done by Life Force, but it was it was actually written probably during... There was a crossover period of the name Trans Modification, so maybe it was a crossover in 86 and in 87, and then we signed with Pure Metal Records in... In um, for um, our, our second real album, which was Miss Cleave, so like really, really well um, in the Christian and also we did well here in the metal mainstream. Christian music was really here in Australia in the 80s because it was sort of paved the body. So when the Christian message problem, you know, right. it, only, it only became a problem in '94. Came in, you know, you know there was black metal around the 80s, Christian metal band to about '94, and when that real black metal scene came in, that was when we started getting out of the scene, especially here, you know. Uh, Can't hear you, boys. Uh, uh, I can't hear you, boys. Oh, I'm sorry. Cutting in now. Yeah. Yeah, I know we're having a little connection issue. Um, uh, but I was starting to say was, when did it begin for you? I mean, as far as, I mean, has, has it been that way or did you fall into it? Uh, uh, maybe you could let me know that. Well, when I was a teenager, I was listening to a lot of metal. Um, yeah, you know, like I started off when, when I was eight years old, listening to Deep Purple and Stato and Slade. And in the late 70s, I got into um, Motorhead and Budgie and like a bunch of classic rock bands. Always been into Status Quo and Purple, been a big sort of classic rock stuff like Blue Oyster Gold and that sort of stuff. Um, and then of course around 1980 I got into Maiden and until 94 that I'd really um, been part of the church. That was something they were related to and then I heard it was extreme, you know, even with Light Force, even playing traditional metal, we were still pushing the boundaries of, you know, we were still bringing forward a modification in, you know, anything. Yeah, leaning on the heavy end of music. But in the early days, um, so we sort of had to stick to heavy rock. So it's kind of finding initially in, in the early part of the, earlier part of the 80s, finding Christian musicians to be mainstream band for fine musicians because even in nineteen eighty seven when we started when we won the Melbourne Heavy Metal Battle of the Bands and we were starting playing the one metal club here, there was only about ten act bands that were any good. So it was a very small scene back then here in Australia. So it was good for us because we always played to a good crowd, you know. Okay, and, and I'm guessing it. Okay. Uh, did did Okay. Uh, what? Can't hear. You. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let, 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 let's try that question again. I, I was saying we've done modification studio releases. Plus, we've done a bunch of live albums, like we did live Platinum. Oh, right. Um, live without fear. No, I sat down, listened to the modification live at coffee. And um, of course, we're going to do 25 years live next year. Okay. Um, so, a bunch of live things with Light Force. I did um, two albums, a couple of demos. So, yeah, there's well in the 20s as far as recordings have gone. But I mean, I've, I've, rec I've recorded at least, I think the longest stretch we've had is three years, so it used to be every year we used to do an album. Um, but in recent years it's been more like two or three years, every two or three years we do an album. So but we will be doing another full-length modification album in September, October this year. Okay, it'll be when you do an album. Sorry? I said it'll be September before you do another album. September, October this year we're doing 
the next full length. Yeah. Okay, and uh, of course, obviously, all your albums to Amazon, uh, CD Baby, you know, uh, some of those other ones, uh, iTunes as well. I bought, bought them from Rations.com. Oh, okay. That's uh, yeah. Th thanks for my. <laughs> I know I the best one. The best and, way. Uh, the best way to support modification the stuff I do. I'm actually at the moment in the process of setting up my own store again because Soundmass has run my road production store for the last 10 years. So I'm going to have my own store and my own pay downloads, road production downloads, probably by the time this interview airs, so within the next couple of weeks. So I would say by um, at latest late March that we will have our own store, our own pay downloads at www.roadproductions.com. So if you want to support the band, it's best to buy hard copies or digitals from us. 100% of the money comes to the to this band, rather than other people, you know. The problem is that it was 100% of the stuff, 100% of that music. And um, yeah, the person who owned that, owns that Adele Meisenheimer, won't give me my, the rights to my albums back. And the contract that I, we signed with Frontline Intense in 1991 is completely flawed ethically and because of all the sales that Nuclear Blast had, because of Nuclear Blast. So I don't know how I'm going to resolve I probably am sitting on dangerous ground piece speaking about it publicly, but I think it's something that needs to be resolved. I've challenged these people about the ethics of what was originally signed. I've spoken to Jim Hamner personally. It was the original person that we signed this bogus record deal, and he said to stop, you know, stop taking my grievances out on other people, which I wasn't. I'm just trying to find a fair playing field. So we haven't had an easy time with our classic releases. All of our classic releases are owned by other people. And um, you know, when Jimmy Kempton went broke, he signed all the contracts and um, to other two other people, which are now Unwise Music. And unfortunately, we don't get anything. Even though we had a small offer, I rejected it. I believe that the, after all these years of the um, rights to those albums should revert to this more admission. There's something to a lot about at the moment. Well, I'd be happy that Nuclear Arm has ownership a lot of the early modification as well. Yeah, this right. is where it all becomes a bit blurred because technically Myers Music owns all that early stuff, but it was all licensed to Nuclear Blast. They've licensed it onto Brazil and Metal Mind in Poland, and Metal Mind have released all of our old stuff on tissue packs. And so who is the owner and who isn't? Even Nuclear Blast is concerned about it because, you know, um, they say to me, you're not going to give me that don't go and tackle Nuclear Blast about what they're doing. And so Nuclear Blast has been very, very good to me. So I can, it, it's sad that the Christians will be down and the mainstream labels will all do the right thing. But when I said the Christian, the Christian was both frontline and did not contact, did not contact me once. I went over in 98 to tour and of course I met with the, the, the um, Piemonte people and got a good reception and everything like that, but I didn't have any contact or support from them going through cancer. My contacts and support from Nicholas and Marcus Stigo for the last, and also in 98 for me. So sometimes um, it's sad to see the fact that I've been looked after so by the um, mainstream, and yet a lot of the Christian labels back in the 80s and 90s were not into music. They were into it for the money, the business, because they weren't even fans of the music they were releasing. Whereas Nuclear Blast and Metal Blade are fully fans of our band when they released them, you know. Okay. So it's, it's a pretty sad state of affairs, the things that are going on in Christian music right now. Very sad. Right. And it's, an, it's historical sadness as well. Right. People being involved in it for the very wrong reason. Well, um, well I, pr I appreciate you uh, taking this for a few minutes. Looking forward to your uh, next album, which probably most likely come out. And, um, I'm losing your voice. If, oh, okay. uh, you, uh, something new, you know, you want to start. I can't get your voice. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Sorry, again, we're having a connection issue here. Um, well, what I was saying was that if you if you need any help, you know, with promoting your stuff, or if you have anything new, you know, you want to come out with, you want to tell us about it, or if you want to come out with an interview, you know, anything like that, 
you know, you're more than welcome to let us know, and we'll maybe we'll have you back on for another interview in the future. Yeah, probably next year. We're 25 years next year. Okay. And I'll make sure that Sherry Ross gets you a copy of the new CD when it comes out. Okay. She's our, well, I appreciate that. She's our, Ameri she's our American manager. Well, um, well I appreciate that. Uh, uh, anyway...